It's very interesting. He's running for the Port of Palm Beach Group 3. And, Roderick, thank you. We're glad to see you here today. And uh, glad you're joining us here in the studio. I'm just going to tell folks a little bit about you, and then we're going to find out a little bit more about the position you're running for because it's new for us here in Martin County. Thank you. Uh, Roderick immigrated to the United States at the age of 17 following his graduation from John Leonard High School. He joined the United States Marine Corps where he served for over 20 years and retired at the rank of gunnery sergeant. During his time in the Marine Corps, he served as chaplain's aide and also assisted in the operations of Port Okinawa, Japan, which oversaw 26 ships daily. During his time in the military, he undertook peacekeeping missions in the Horn of Africa and led troops in the Iraq Desert Storm and Operation Enduring Free Freedom. In his civilian life, he was an operations manager for a large retail organization and pastor of a small community church. Roderick received a business degree from the University of Maryland. So welcome to the show, Roderick. Thank you so much. I feel welcome, and thank you again. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure to have you. I like to be able to share everybody's platform, so it's great that you came up here from Palm Beach County. A little bit of a drive yes. this morning. I yes. hope you didn't get too much traffic. No, not, not too much. Uh, I think I got most of the traffic when I, when I hit Stewart. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Everything is changing. That's you are getting a 7-Eleven now um, gas station. Right. And um, y'all doing a lot of work with the media. But, you know, every place is changing. Port St. Lucie is changing. Stewart is changing. West Palm Beach is building up, so yes. You got that right, Roderick, yes. and the traffic is really a, a big issue here yes. locally, so yes. it's it's something, as you said, everything's changing, it's growing everywhere. We have so many people moving to Florida. I've, that, I've noticed that. Yes. Um, we have, what, over 2.3 million people yes. recently left other states and come to Florida. The good, the good question is, why is that? Right, I know it. You Besides buy... the sunshine and the great, great weather, That's right. why is so many um, people moving here? I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the Republican Party is doing a great job of letting people govern, not so much the government govern. We have a great governor in Ron DeSantis, which I spoke to him many times, and his pastor call and praying for his wife and family during their time when she was ill. So we have a great governor. We've got great leadership, and that's the reason why I'm running to ensure that we keep that going. And I'm, this is my third time running for the Port of Palm Beach. Third time's a charm. That's, that's right. Say. That's right. That's right. And and I'm getting more that. exposure, obviously raising more money, which is important. Better endorsement, more impo more importantly, we just got endorsed by the, the Fire and Police Benevolent Fund. And they have also donated, and they're going to be at my fundraiser, which is tomorrow. I have a fundraiser. Tika Marina, you guys are invited. If you guys are in West Palm Beach, right by the port of Palm Beach. So let's talk a little bit about your position because in Martin County we do not have a, a port of, of a port commissioner. Is that yes. pretty much the title? Well, one thing that you are controlling, of course, is the port, which is by Peanut Island, and many of us up here are certainly familiar with Peanut Island, right? And let, let's talk a little bit about what you do. But there's kind of a different faction from what I understand when you come to dredging. One is on the environmental side, um, they talk about the impact such as potential harm to the marine life and water quality and effects on the local ecosystem. Where the other side said, look, we need to dredge. It's local economy, improves navigation, access for boaters, boost tourism, commerce. So what do you say to these two different factions when you're, as a commissioner, this is part of your job is deciding yes. when and how much that port needs to be dredged, right? Yes. Well, let me give a little background about the port real quick. Uh, the port just sits on 165 acres, which seems a lot, but it really isn't. They have thir 30, uh, currently 30 tenants. Tenants are um, not necessarily on the port. Some are on the port and some are adjacent to the port, and they feed into the port. For example, you got Tropical, which takes up 85% of the, the port hmm. property. Okay. Tropical is very big. They take in annual... Um, big money with a B. I we mean, see those container ships all the yes, time out they're, there. They're in worldwide, the ocean. and they're doing a lot of of good things for the Port of Palm Beach, and they're they everywhere around the world, which is which is great for the Port of Palm Beach. We have the Margaritaville, which ha recently have two ships, yes. and we're looking to get more ships, and those two ships can fit at at um, one at a time into our port. Okay. Of course, as you mentioned, I was. Um, a manager of a port and now we had about um, 30 ships at least a day coming in and out so to be honest with you the port of Palm Beach is a small port but it's so important that we learn about all the infrastructure all the finances that come in all the assistance that the port can give adjacent city drudging is important you must drudge for maintenance 
and there's finances set aside and in the budget for drudging. So we do need to drudge, but we also need to ensure that we do not harm the core of the law because that's important. But the, the Port of Palmage can only house or well, keep one ship at a time. Okay. And during the, the COVID, there was only one ship that was allowed within the port and the other one was outside of Nassau. Is so there it's any, not very big. No, I was going to say, there, it's not very large at all. It, is there any way to expand it? And I'm guessing no, because it's no. The, the space is already taken yeah, up. There's yes. commercial operators there, and Rybovich, I know, is down there, and a lot of different places. There is an option to that. Okay. And a couple of years ago, when I ran the first time, which was about 10 years ago, 8 years ago, and I ran against the same opponent, which I will be seeing um, this November, and it's interesting, sometimes... You know, I, I'm a religious man. I think sometimes you gotta um, not be afraid to do the hard task. So I'm not afraid to challenge this person again. She's been there going on 20 something years and it's time for her to go. Her her ideas and her um, leadership is outdated for lack of a better word. And she doesn't see a, a big future, a brighter future for the Port of Palm Beach. The Port has a lot going on, but it needs great leadership. It needs someone with a vision. And that's the main reason I'm running. Going back to your, your question, there have always been a talk of an inlet port, and she was the main one that um, shut it down. So 10 years ago, it was suggested, maybe you heard about it, maybe you didn't, have an inlet port in the Glades area. The land was allocated through Florida Crystal, and it would provide jobs, and it would be a, a smaller adjacent port to the Port of Palm Beach where ships can come in, unload, and it would alleviate a lot of the, um, the trucks carrying molasses and sugar back and forth. Okay. So it would definitely would have been good for the environment, but it would have cost a lot of money. I mean, it would. It was estimated at least $20 million. And for what I heard, that was the main reason why she wanted to shut it down. But the benefits outweigh the cons. So with me as a commissioner, that's something I want to open again, that discussion. Because the Glades needs, I don't know if you've been out to the, the Glades, it's lacking infrastructure, it's lacking jobs, it's lacking opportunities. I've been out there several times. And it's similar to growing up in Jamaica. So I can relate to the, the, the you know, people out there that want more. They, they need more, but there's not a lot offered to them. And they feel very neglected, for lack of a better word. Roderick, we're talking about the Glades, and there's probably folks going, wait a minute, the inlets in, in West Palm Beach. It's actually, a, your district is actually yes. quite large. So can you kind of explain your district boundaries? Yes. My district runs from North Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, River Beach, all the way to the Glades, or from Donna Ross Road, all the way out to Pahokee. Pahokee is the most southern. So we cover a, 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 a large area. And there's a lot of need there. Now, I was recently asked, because the port is not directly um, responsible for the glaze as far as finances. But when we do run, we do go out there and we do advertise ourselves. We do sell ourselves, for lack of a better word. We need those people to vote for us also. So I believe we need to be more active in helping people in the glaze. And that's something I want to bring forward. And recently, I was interviewed for the, by the Port of Palm Beach. And there is a lack of jobs and housing. And my idea, which I spoke to a lot of elected uh, officials and the business leaders, is to gather everybody together and so that we can all challenge this bad economy that Biden has put us in. I mean, let's be honest, regardless which side of the fence you're on, and I'm running nonpartisan. Yes, I'm a conservative Republican, but I need a Republican, Democrat, and the non decided to vote for me, yes. But I'm that candidate. I want to bring everybody to the the table because this is a problem from everyone mm -hmm. regardless if you have a lot of money and you're on a hill or you're down in the, the valley this bad Biden economy affects us all I work for Walmart um, Walmart I've opened Walmarts I have closed Walmarts and right now if you go into any Walmart uh, I, I can it used to be 15 cents it's now 75 cents so everything has skyrocketed on the Biden economy Everybody's hurting, except they're really filter rich or the Biden family. But everybody else that's under the sun is hurting in some way. So we need to change that from the top to the bottom. From the White House all the way to the port, there needs to be a change of leadership. Very important. So how many commissioners are on the port? Right now, wait, there's five commissioners. There's five the commissioners. And how yes, many are up this? Three seats. Three seats are seat up. Seat one, two, and three. Okay. I'm running in seat three. Just one opponent, the incumbent? 
Yes, okay. she'll be there in, in um, November. Okay, all right. So this is very important, folks, as you can tell, and this is part of the industry in Palm Beach County, and your your port is, how much money does it bring in, do you think? The port brings in at least $90 million, um, oh. annually right okay. now. Okay. And it, it recently had a $20 million increase under Mr. Meekins. And I, I don't, don't, I'm not aware if you have looked at the, the, the post recently. Um, I'm going to call her name, Ms. Jean Ann Wright, which was my opponent. Okay. Um, three times um, early this year, she tried to get rid of Mr. Meekins. And her reasoning is because Mr. Meekins does not, um, uh, I guess, checks with her on the leadership or the running or the employment or um, taking care of the tenants as she sees fits. Because she, prior to yeah. Meekins there, she had um, a, a leader that would, uh, for lack of a better word, would answer to her on every aspect. So Meekins is there and said, look, you put me here for a reason, to bring in the finances, and that's what I'm doing. You come to the meetings, I let you know what's going on. Everything else you know, should be taken with respect. So that's something I want to eliminate. Mr. Meek is doing a great job. He needs to remain there. If you get anybody else there in the seat, or you keep the young lady in the seat, Jean Enright, she would get rid of Mr. Meekins. And that growth that we're seeing right now, and that financial increase we're seeing will go away. All because she wants control. And that's not good. I don't know. I know what you said. You see it in the White House. You see it in, in every election official. They say one thing, then when they get elected, they change. I'm they not sure going to change. I, I've been around for a while. I'm a young age of 50. I've seen a lot of things come and go. I've met a lot of presidents during my time while I was in the military. I met Clinton. Um, I've met the, all the Bushes. I haven't been to the White House a few times. Wow. So there's nothing Fantastic. that I'm going to see right now right. that's going to change my mindset from being a conservative man of God and leading by the front or through the front. So again, we're speaking with Roderick Clark. He's running for Port of Palm Beach Group 3. You can look more up about Roderick at clarkforport.com. Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E, for, F-O-R, port.com. Looking port. donations. <laughs> donations. You always need it, um, yes. especially when you're running against an incumbent. Incumbents always have an advantage bringing yes. in donations just with the name recognition and people they've met over the year through their elected office. And, of, of course, obviously there's no term limit here for this uh, seat. So... No, there isn't, but recently they what... put it in for next October. That it will be Interesting. Permanent. But yes. But fantastic. So you're talking about, you've, you, you've shared with us, we only have like three minutes left. I would love to talk with you further, but your, your vision, you talked about uh, the, the Glades community needing a port in that area. Yes. What else do you see for a vision that's different from the incumbent? Right now there's no security at the port. We, they recently have um, a River Beach police officer that's there 24 hours a day, and that's recently because of certain activities that have happened. Certain passengers bringing ammunition to um, Nassau and so forth and so on. Certain growth, and you know with growth comes certain people mm -hmm. that we want to ensure that the right people get on these ships, the right people come to the port. What I want to do from day one is to get vendors together and get the right vendor with the most sophistication and under a budget to come to the port so that we can have surveillance system, train dogs and make sure that we are safe in the port. Just like you want to secure the border, and that's important, obviously, is the border is broken, but we want to make sure our port of Palm Beach is safe also so you can take your, your trip, take your children, <coughs> grandchildren, I know you don't have grandchildren yet. No, 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 yeah, thank goodness, but I could, but yes, <laughs> thank exactly. goodness I don't. Um, no, Roderick, this is very important, and certainly a port is one of those places that uh, you have to watch for security no matter what, yes. what's coming in on container ships and who, absolutely who's boarding. So I completely agree with you that security is of utmost importance. Right now in the United States, we have to watch every inch of our border, yes. and the port you is one of them. see what happened to um, former President Trump recently. Right, Come on. I, mean, I, know, I know. Security is important. We need the right people in the right places. It, it absolutely is. Vote for Roderick Clark. Roderick Clark, yes. Port of Palm Beach, Group 3. And uh, this is very important. You know, it's, it's another very important race that all of us have to really focus on, and this yes. is a local race. And you said this one's going to be decided in November. Yes. And even though most people, some people can't vote for me, they're not in my area, but you can donate. Go to ClarkReport.com. All right, really Roger really Clark. That. All right, and you're having fundraisers again yes, tomorrow at Tiki? Tiki Marina at 6 p.m. Tiki 8. Marina. There we go. Lots of fun, and I'm sure there's a lot more, and you can follow him on his uh, Facebook page. You have a Facebook page? Yes, I do. Roger Clark. There we go. Play Instagram, Roger Clark. <laughs> follow him along. So we're out there. 
meet him at the uh, the fundraisers and let's support him. And you know what? I just think it's always good to have a fresh perspective and new people in the office. And yes. somebody that's been in for over a couple of decades, maybe it's time to move on and let new ideas come in. And yes, it it's, doesn't it's hurt, does it? That's right. It's been time. From it, the White House all the way to the port. 100%. Time. <laughs> I, I'm a, I, I love term limits. So there's, uh, every once in a while, there's, I disagree with that. But 99% of the time, term limits are great. Roger Clark, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for inviting me. I really I, my that. pleasure. I'm glad you came back up Hopefully to our I'll little tennis tour. Before November, maybe September. Yes, exactly. Okay. We'll have to get you back up here and talk a little bit more in depth. So, and we'll have to watch out for that traffic. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roger. You take care. Thanks. Thank you.